This could be one of those very million dollar paintings that I've been looking for. This here, which has got me freaking excited. Who wants gold? Who wants platinum? Who wants diamonds? One, two, three. I haven't seen a sword like this before, but I know it has some type of value. It is a Freemason sword. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, pirates of all ages, we are here about to unload this $4,200 Freemason third part to the Silver Horde unit and make some videos. I haven't seen a sword like this before, but I know it has some type of value. It is a Freemason sword. Kind of a rare one, pretty First problem is we have no room in here and we got to make room and we got to separate and we got to do what we got to do so we can fit it in here appropriately. Uncle Michael, what is this about this record you like? I was, used to love Mr. Rogers. Yeah, you grew up watching him? Yes. He was your guy? Didn't you watch Mr. Rogers? I did because it was on after Sesame Street. Wow. He was, he, was, he was good. All right, we got the storage unit all cleaned up. We got everything separated. We got $34,500 storage unit that needs to be gone through. I still got to get through this stuff from when I moved out of my house. I got books because I'm waiting to do something special with books. We got YouTube auction stuff. We got stuff from the $34,000 here. This was packages I got to go through. Setting stuff aside if Alameda Flea Market ever opens up. I'm going to do something special with this stuff. We got stuff we're even going to do the Saturday Flea Market. Our records from our auction. Well, I'm not my auction it was fat man the no, flipper and l cuban also did a charity auction for somebody and i bought this whole lot right here for 475 off of this man who are you my name is tom cruise tom is i thought tom name. cruise is your tom name cruise is my that name. is my name yes. all right yeah we yeah, have... i sold you some great records pirate you did there's yeah. a you're looking at them backwards by the way oh because because they have the price on them that way they oh even even have the cool one. Oh yeah i've sold a few of those recently <laughs> Look at all these great records, guys. These will end up on my eBay, probably. Elvis. Shout out to the Cookie Monster. He does all my eBay. And that's probably a good one. Miles Davis. Led, Led Zeppelin's always good. That's 30 bucks. Jimi Hendrix. That's 30 right there, right? And the Leonard Nimoy record. What's that worth? Uh, Never sold that. That one's 30. This is the Seeds. The picture disc Seeds. This is Garage Rock. All that's right. like a $40 bill. Wow. Madonna's always hot for some reason. Yeah. Look at all these great records, guys. Shout out, comment below if any of these records is something you've spun many times back in the day when you was listening to records or currently and was just the jam. I'd like to know which one of these was your jam. Bo Diddley. Beatles, always hot. Nice. Now we will go through this, set it up, and separate for the next phase. YouTube has taught me a lot of patience in this biz. I used to just rush through opening stuff, but something I noticed yesterday, which I still have not got a chance to look at, when I took the marble off yesterday, there's some type of really nice case in here. It could be silver, gold, who knows what is in there, but I'm so excited to start going through this stuff. So much for an empty storage, huh? And we're done with that section. First off, the trailer's loaded one third for Monday's stocked. There goes Uncle Michael, he's leaving now because we're done with all that. And I'm gonna film solo. We're gonna try Saturday Load and Conquer. Ain't done that in a while. So I set up some cool stuff aside to test that market again. Wow, and this is what we've done today. We've got all sorts of stuff set up. We got the furniture. We got, this is basically what I gambled $4,200 on to see what was in the rest of this family's life, basically. So we got all these boxes to go through. We got a lot of furniture. I'll show you some furniture. Things are full. Look at, boom. I showed you a minute ago. Look at something like this. We got these Sansui speakers right here. Sansui. If anybody uh, knows about Sansui, Look up this pair of SP2500. They're not in the greatest shape externally, but internally they're great. That's good money right there. I'll be Craigslist. We got all these neat little corner cabinets. I didn't show you much of that. I think we did go through them, but this is cool. I'll clean this up a little bit. I'll put the doors back on, probably try to get a hundred on that. This one ended up having the door that's missing. So this one must hopefully be a hundred dollars. The contents of that that you saw in the previous video will end up in an online auction maybe. I showed you that cabinet already there. We got this one here as a little radio of some form. These are not usually any type of value. Philco, kind of corroded. Somebody might like that, turn into a fish tank stand or something. We'll put the doors back on this, hopefully try to get a hundred on this one. It's one big door. 
We got this, which should probably just go to the market. We got to go through its contents. We got this right here, contents to go through. This piece of furniture you'll see soon. This will go through. Can't get the door to go back closed, but it was pretty neat. Check this out. This popped out. I got one piece I really want to go through, so we're going to get to that first. House of Representatives, Washington, February 12th, 1937. Norman W. Shaw for 75th Congress. Members pass. That is pretty cool. If you remember correctly, we showed you this piece. That's when we found the gold watch and the weird uh, world order type note. But this piece here, this one extremely intrigues me. If you remember what we found out after we sold all the silver in that unit, that the, that the person was a silversmith, John Waite. So I'm wondering if this was some type of silver display made by Towley. Ooh, interesting. Is that actually this? Ooh, that's pretty crazy. If this is made by Tally, the silver container tarnished. I thought this was something that maybe the family had when they were selling silver in the 1700s. It says, Victorian, can't read that one, Rose Point, Old Colonial, Candlelight, Old Lace, Chippendale, and Rambler Rose. There's no sterling silver in it. But it's all these neat little drawers that held, like, I guess... Maybe samples of what somebody was selling. Hard to say. But it, it's a pretty neat piece of furniture in my eyes. This might hold a value of a couple hundred bucks. Unless we can prove it belonged to some silversmith in the 1700s. Then it has intrinsic value. This chair was neat. But this stuff doesn't exactly sell very well. All new material. Cotton, etc., etc. Owner. I believe I showed you this clock the other day, but I'm not positive. It's a gift, 1787 Constitutional Bicentennial. This does not hold much value to it. I'll be probably lucky or happy if I get 100. This piece here though, this grandfather clock I'm about to show you right here is going to be probably one of the nicest clocks I've ever found. Something about it, um, as I'm talking, my palms are itching. This palm right here is just itching as I speak about it. And I think that this thing has some type of value that beyond the value of just an average clock. Look at her in all of her glory. It's a little Rafferty in a sense because it's older than all of us put together. You could tell with the casing that there is all sorts of little blemishes. Things need to be fixed. It's cracking here. But this thing here, watch, let me show you. Look at that. Look at this oil painting on here. It says GI 1800, I think is what it says. Oh, little trick you use, you get it a little bit moist and you rub it across there. GL, GL 1800. So that person, I think painted this painting. Look at just the quality of the piece and the type of style that goes with it. I believe this could be a very, this could be one of those very million dollar paintings that I've been looking for, just that it's on the clock face. I'm unsure. The clock mechanisms are very old. The train's going by. Look at this, it's just how it's made. So yeah, this piece right here to me, I gotta, I gotta do some research and I gotta get somebody to look at it. Cause I think this piece right here could go down as one of the greatest things I've ever found in a storage unit and could potentially have prices value because that is a 1800 signed oil painting in my eyes. Then they got this bike. I don't think the bike has that very much value. I'm unsure, it doesn't look like a Schwinn. I can't make the names out there. It's very old though, so we'll definitely have to have a bike specialist look at this. Like I said, I don't think it's a Schwinn, but we'll, we'll let you know. Then there's this piece here. If I showed you guys in the beginning of this video that I took everything I had to not look in here, I'm itching to go through here. We got all of this right here. Don't, don't laugh, that looks like pleasure to me. And then we have this here, which has got me freaking excited to look inside of this. Look what it says right here. presented to Mr. and Mrs. Peel as a token of appreciation by the staff of Manitoba Club on their departure from Winnipeg, June 
1913. There's something in there. I'm excited because that sounds like could be silver, could be gold, could be jewelry. Whew. Let me get the tripod set up. We're going to go through. The <laughs> What's that? <sighs> this is neat. I remember finding some of those. FHS. Could be sterling. Smells sweet. I, I'm trying to be excited because or not. I'm trying to be calm. Because that looks like a bag of rings right there. It looks like a bag of jewelry. And I, I don't want to look at it just yet. I want it to be priceless diamond rings. So I just don't want to touch it. So I want to come back to that. Because I feel like there's something in there. That might make me scream. Bosch in Lom. No. Yeah. That's Bosch and Lom. Very old. Very old prescription glasses, but those frames could hold money because they're Bosch and Lom. Mm. Look at this old wood top. That'll end up on an auction. Okay. Burger King. Cadillac. My gut says, open it. My mind says, wait. Genuine Sheffield entire dish. What is that? Ammo, 1840. Entry dish. That's this thing right here. This, maybe, it's genuine Sheffield dish, Armo, 1840. It could be this piece of furniture right here. So that's intriguing to know that could be 1840s. First off, here's something you don't see uh, enough on camera, but it's always needed to be done, is looking for pieces of things taped behind drawers, under drawers, around drawers. All right, let's bring this in here. Let's go like this. A pen. Who wants gold? Who wants platinum? Who wants diamonds? Take two out and pass it around. 99. Rings on the wall. It says 18 karat, but I think it says HGE on there. That's what I think I'm seeing. This one has no marking but it's old and it has that look. You're gonna have to get that tested. Let's take another one. <sighs> Size B. And this one says 18 karat HGE. Uh, don't get discouraged, Michael. And this one says size eight. This one says 18 karat HGE. Still cool though. Don't get me wrong. I'm just not as exciting as gold. Obviously gold is way better. This means it's electroplated heavily. But look at the stones on that one. Look at them sparkling. This one needs to be tested. No markings. 18 karat HGE, geez, that would, what is that, a one carat? Wouldn't that be priceless to find? Another. Another one of these rings, so we got two of those. These are pretty though. Purdy, purdy. It looks like it says 18 karat HGE as well. So I don't know. We'll have these looked at. Okay, and this drawer's wiped out here, so let's go through this one real quick. 
Good sign when you see these. I remember they had so much silver. Speaking of silver. Is it? Please be. This is very, very old. It would hold cigarettes, maybe. It smells sweet. It says par. This looks like silver, but I don't see the words, but it's very old. It's hand pounded. See the, the little hammer marks there? This is definitely something of, this is nice. This is nice. All right. Lipstick, look at this. He said, look underneath always. Okay, I will. A geyser. Okay. Ephemera, I guess you call that. Mm, it's not looking, it's looking very desolate here. Look at this freaking cactus right here. Holy smokes. Imagine that fell on her and all the spikes that would come down. That is just not... I wouldn't stand under that. 14 karat gold. Nothing in there. Oh, that's a good sign, though. It means maybe we'll find 14 karat gold. All right. We got one cool thing to look in. No. Nope. I'm excited because... Come on. Something's in there. On three. On three, right? Three. We're going to count to three, and then we're going to go two and one, and then we're going to open it, right? Three. All right. One. Two. Three. Come on. What is this? It's some of those, but different. Or is it the same? Oh, what is this? A F. H S again. <clears throat> they smell sweet. That's not what you the first thing you always want to do. See these two are not part of that though. What they look sterling though. Oh come on. So this should go here, right? And then this one went here somehow, was already out. Okay. We got a piece of paper here. At some point, I feel like I sold some of these before. This is not the same, look. It says JBS. This one's not the same. And I remember selling some of those. No key. Here's the key. Look at that. It comes with a key. That's unique. Now, the importance of this right now, this goes in here, so we gotta make sure we don't lose that. The importance of this set, there's no spoons. The importance of this set is, there's a note on the top, and that note says it was given to somebody, and it also says, right here, hold on. Port and Markle Limited, Winnipeg. Now this, I've never heard of. And then here it says, cover English make patent six, six uh, in 1912 is what it says, basically. So I gotta do some research because this, once again, it says on the top, presented, et cetera, et cetera. So that has some, I don't even know what the Manitoba club is. Craziness, craziness. This stuff has been 
pulling out some stuff already. I've only gone through a smidgen of it. I got all this to go through. I just showed you kind of a walkthrough earlier. This is the remembrance of the first video, but I gotta go home. Kids need me. I will tell you this though. When I get home, I'm gonna film this. The end of this video will be right after this, but there's one very nice piece that I brought home yesterday it was in the cabinet. It was a sword. You need to see this sword, Civil War era. I'm gonna go home and film that, take care of some stuff, so stay tuned. Long day it's been, we are back at the house. I told you I wanted to show you guys something very special that came from this storage unit. I haven't seen a sword like this before, but I know it has some type of value. It is a Freemason sword. Kind of a rare, I'm pretty sure it's Freemason, but this right here, this is like the I word, or it is like bone or something, I'm unsure. Look at the quality in this piece, it's complete. There's markings here, very well kept. Unsure of the era, but you see it's purple. What does it say here? It says in Hawk Sicknovensis. I don't know. It says something like that. And under here it says J.M. Litchfield and Company of San Francisco, California. Did a little bit of research myself. I saw one in not good shape on the internet for like 550 or 575. I forget off the top of my head right now. But I find that to be a very interesting piece. But actually, I'm not just going to sell it because you never know if I have other things. Might have something, a sheath. I found the leather one, but I'm not sure if it's actually to this or not. But first two units I bought, I learned a lot. This unit changed me as a person because usually when I find something, it usually has just this value. This is what it's worth. But never have I seen a unit where from front to back had nothing but family history you're able to pinpoint stuff i've got stories paperwork dating from 1726 to like 1982 or something never have i found something like that and i found so many things that i found out that the silversmith even though i sold it to the 64 pounds of silver he was a famous silversmith in 1735 and one or two pieces could have been him and it could have been twenty thousand dollars for a piece of silver versus 150 in scrap or 250 in just normal extra value but this unit changed me as a person and i will not sell things somewhere i have the box if we look right here i have this watch i saved the liqueur watch because i knew the lecoultre watch box because i knew i was buying this unit again and i knew it was coming so somewhere i have the box to this and other things that i just got to piece together i'm seeing paperwork from a clock something like that i I just, there's, there's so much I want to find out. So none of this stuff's going anywhere until I figure out the story. Thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe. I love y'all. Blessings.